This project is a qualitative biomechanical analysis of the clean and jerk in an effort to identify the most effective technique for completing the lift. This will be done by analyzing and identifying the most effective body positioning and subsequent bar path on the overall execution of the clean and jerk. Using a keen eye and the aid of technology, like slow motion capture and analysis software, a coach can successfully conduct a biomechanical analysis by breaking the total action into its basic elements and then applying mechanical and anatomical knowledge to improve the overall quality and success of the lift. The clean and jerk is unique in that it allows the greatest loads to be lifted from the ground to arm's length overhead during weightlifting. The muscular forces that raise the barbell in the clean and jerk when all is said and done begin and end with the pressure applied through the feet. The force of the feet pressing into the floor creates an equal and opposite support reaction so that the force generated by the muscles may be applied in the lifting of the barbell. Highly trained muscles that create massive torques about the hips, knees, and ankles cause the lower limbs to rapidly extend initiating the forces that are transferred through the kinetic chain and act on the static barbell. Once inertia has been overcome, the barbell is accelerated in a relatively vertical direction. By manipulating the technique of the body about the barbell in the clean and jerk, the athlete can change the angle and distance of the barbell from the body, shortening the momentum and effectively optimizing the force applied to the barbell. For the purpose of analysis, the clean can be broken down into six distinctive parts. The startup position, first pull, the second pull, the drop under, receiving the bar, and the squat. Although when executing the lift, they should not be thought of as separate. A conscious effort to execute specific parts in the lift and not as a whole will cause the whole lift to be too slow and inefficient where the speed of muscular contraction and speed of movement are crucial. In the start position, the bar should be positioned over the feet with back flat and shoulders over the bar. This positions the main lifting muscles in an optimal length to generate a large vertical force on the bar. In the first pull, the greatest vertical forces are produced from the barbell separation from the platform up to the first full extension of the legs. Over the first few inches of the lift, the barbell is moving slowly where the conditions are static or close to static where there will be more time available to generate force. Optimally, the bar should travel inside of the vertical plane of its initial position during the start. In this clip, you can see as Daniel generates force against the barbell, there is a shifting inclination of the shins, thighs, and trunk relative to vertical. The ideal trajectory of the bar will slightly cross the vertical line near the end of the second pull or explosion phase. This phase consists of the shifting of the knees under the bar and the final extension of the knee, hip, and ankle joints as the bar reaches maximum velocity. The effort to lift the barbell primarily with the muscles which straighten the legs and the trunk creates the conditions which lead to a natural shifting of the knees forward and down under the bar. This technique keeps the already active extensor muscles in an optimal length in order to further accelerate the bar and prevent a significant drop in barbell speed. This is because this position works best for reducing the increasing moment force relative to the ankle, knee, and hip joints as the legs straighten. It also helps draw the bar closer to the center of mass between the barbell and the body in order to improve the mechanical efficiency of the working joints by shortening the moment arm of the barbell. The fourth and fifth phases of the clean involve the rapid drop and deceleration of the falling barbell. This portion requires a great eccentric breaking of the muscles to slow the descent of the bar. The athlete must maintain high elbows in the front rack position while maintaining proper squat form through the descent and subsequent squat to stand. The faster the drop, the quicker the shoulders can make contact and apply force upward to the relatively still barbell, reducing the time for the barbell to gain acceleration and more force downward. The jerk can be broken into five separate phases for the purpose of the analysis. The starting position, the dip, drive, drop, and split. At the beginning of the movement, the barbell is positioned across the lifter's anterior deltoids. A rapid counter movement initiates and contributes to an explosive lower limb extension 
where the bar is then vertically displaced, enabling the lifter to rapidly descend underneath it by splitting the legs and catching the bar on locked out arms. Throughout the jerk, the barbell should be kept on a vertical line. Although it is widely thought that the athlete should concentrate on lifting the barbell as high as possible and then drop under it, it is actually necessary for the weightlifter to prepare to switch directions before the knee, hip, and ankle joints have ceased straightening. The most important component of an effective catch of the barbell during the jerk is connected with the right instant to begin switching directions. When an athlete continues to actively lift the barbell past the point of diminishing returns, he significantly reduces the effectiveness of the descent under and the receiving of the barbell.